Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. I, of course, you know I get lots of requests to do all these kinds of paintings and we're slowly getting to them. But uh, one that I have gotten so many requests over the years since I first showed a little snippet of it is the painting that's right behind me back there. And I did that as my own personal study about five years ago of a uh, Belgian uh, 19th century artist called Franz. His name was Franz Mortemans. That's M-O-R-T-E-L-M-A-N-S. And Mortemans uh, was just on the verge of Impressionism and stuff, and he did some really pretty uh, florals, floral still lifes and stuff, and it's really kind of nice. But a lot of people always like that silver. I'm going to do mine today uh, a little bit more pewter. Now, you can see, maybe if I move out of the way here, you can see that uh, we had some people in the uh, studio, and one of them damaged that painting, cut a hole. That's a stretch canvas cut a hole right into it. Um, that's one reason, one of the things that, why I paint so much on boards, that's what I'm gonna do today is the boards, is canvas is gonna sometimes be very, very fragile. Now, we can repair that, and I'll do a video on how you go about repairing something like that. But uh, I'm gonna just do a little bit of pewter, a pewter vase today, a little bit older uh, looking, more than he had a little bit more of the, the silver kind of vase in there with the, the blues and stuff that come with how we make silver. And I'll do more on those because you see me paint brass and all different kinds of pewter and stuff. And I like to show you all that, but uh, I'm going to show you a little bit different way. And we're going to take a frame. Now, this frame that you see right back there, uh, that's a frame that my wife just picked up over at Michael's when she was in Cheyenne, Wyoming over the weekend. And uh, she said, hey, I got to this frame for you. It was only $15. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful frame. So I take this over here. And I want, so I, you know, this is a 16 by 20. And I, I want to pull some of these colors out of here into my floral here. And uh, so it's going to be, uh, my pewter is going to be a little bit more towards the umber sides and stuff on it, the middle, we will we'll incorporate those colors, I'll show you, because I like to take those colors and incorporate into the frame, so let's do that, okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I go about sketching it, and then we'll uh, do in an undertone, and then how we're gonna paint it. Now, uh, this is my standard palette, but to it today I added two earth colors that you don't see me use a tremendous amount of, but they're going to help me match those colors on the frames, the burnt umber and the raw umber. This is my standard YouTube palette, plus then I also added out some medium white. I'm going to, because the frame, there I did a lot of pink flowers, because the frame has so much white in it, I'm going to add, I'm going to shift some of those to a white flower and maybe a little bit of yellows in there as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to develop this as we go using the frame as a key for our colors today, okay? Because some of you have that and it's like you're at, you ask me, how do you match some of these colors? You'll see. Okay, so, and I'm going to do most of it with a with a filbert. When I do mortarmans, I like to use a filbert more because it, allow, it gives me the filbert, like I've showed you in a couple of videos, gives me the ability to draw with it, okay? All right, so I have these colors. I'll list all these colors in the video description below. So just look for that. You'll see all the colors. It's my traditional palette. I also have out some of the uh, Dervan Open Medium. This is going to allow me to paint some more refined, uh, loose edge roses and stuff, which I want to do. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Okay, 16 by 20, 20 inches this way, this way. This is a quarter inch panel. You could also use a stretch canvas like I did over there. Uh, I gave it a coat of canvas prep medium, the Heritage Multimedia Canvas Prep Medium. And let's just come in and we'll do a little bit of the drawing with it. When I draw, I'm just going to use, matter of fact, let's use, let's use a rough old, I like to paint ornaments with an old brush. Whenever I do 19th century floral painters, I like the old brushes. Let's just, we'll just do some real loose sketching here real quick, using just some water. As a matter of fact, first, you can do this before, you can do this after, it doesn't make any difference, but maybe what I'll do is I'll, instead of we're painting right on a whiteboard or a white canvas, I'm gonna take my large brush and a little bit of my umber and a little bit of my, uh, my burnt umber and my raw umber, and I'm gonna make a wash here first, pre-tone, pre-tone down. These are gonna be the colors basically that you're going to see in that frame in some of the antiquing of the frame and so i'm i'm going to loosely because all this is going to cover up we're going to do a real loose background but this is going to give me a pre-tone 
that is already going to, I don't want to touch that extender that I just did. Just want to use water so it dries pretty quickly here. Um, so just some water into this. But I'm going to have some, I want the, the tones to come out. So sometimes I'll want maybe a bit more raw umber, sometimes a bit more burnt umber. We'll just get this and we're going to put in light direction. All this is going to cover up. It just gives you a pre-tone to everything, which I do like to do. You see me do this on uh, landscapes and everything like that. And when I uh, want some real casual florals, of course I don't do it, you know, you see me do all small florals. I don't do it completely to cover up everything. Today I'm gonna cover up everything, but I'm gonna leave the brushwork real loose because that's what I want going on. And you can check that. See, just reach over and grab this frame. See, that's a, a beautiful color down into that frame. It's picking up these kind of colors in through here. So already I'm going to start a, a general tone to my canvas that's going to work really well with the frame. Does that make sense? So now all i got to do is paint some flowers. Easy. All right. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna. You might even just take a little bit of your raw umber burnt umber here. This is normally how I do some sketches and stuff. And generally 16 here. So right about right about in here is going to be our halfway, which well, I don't want to put a, a vase and stuff right exactly halfway. I'm, I always say I'm going to bring the light in like Mortimer did on that one in from this side here. So I'm going to shove my base just back a little bit from halfway. So I'll put it, you know, like an inch back. So it's a little bit longer over here than it is over here somewhere. And what that does is it gets you lots of room up here in the front. We can put some fallen flowers and stuff like that, but we can also develop our light source coming through in our through light, you know, back up over here. So, <clears throat> so we have that. And then I'm going to mark, oh, just down, not quite halfway somewhere right in here, this will be right the area, and real loose, this will be right the area of the, the top of my vase here that I want to have. I don't want it exactly halfway. We're going to bury it in leaves and florals, but I want that vase to come just right about, so this is about the halfway mark there. And you can check, you know, just how close you are with some of this stuff, and I'm just right about there. That's just right about halfway. So that's pretty good. Now, so let's just come down here. And sometimes I'll take this, take my little square, and I'll make a line down like that. This is going to be the center line of my vase. And so what I'll do up here is I'll come right up through here and I'll draw just a casual little ellipse here. Right in here, this is going to be the opening of the vase. And of course, that other canvas that I did over there, uh, that I did that study of there was much larger. That's an 18 by 24. So this one's going to be a lot smaller. Now, what I do is I'll match that ellipse and that has that little vase over there that I like has uh, smaller little feet on it and stuff. So I'm going to kind of match that ellipse, nice little curved ellipse over there. And it does I just glance at it every once in a while. It's going to have little feet. This one's going to be covered up by something there, but some little feet down there. Now, so this is going to be the height of my vase. Okay, so the painting overall is going to be quite a bit smaller than what I did over there on that one. And it, but it's still going to be kind of nice. We'll look at that uh, there. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. And I'm just looking at my light source here. So I might, I might want to just bring that feet up just a a bit of the base of that just a bit higher here here where that's those feet and stuff are let's raise that up just a touch so it gives me a little more working room right in here so that's where that ellipse is going to be see i love the casual edge of drawing it nothing perfect you put that impressionism in you know and it's going to help you quite a bit now so we're going to have the round part of the vase is going to be right about here and see, I can just make a gentle curve down line here. Now I want to match that, so I'm going to come right back up over here. And so my my vase, and you, with that wet, you can just push a little bit, and you can see you can have that same roundness right over here. The other way to do stuff like that is to take these little pair of calipers, and you just match, and you can see I'm just I'm fine there. And make sure like the the ellipse off of that center line 
is the same and see it's there it could come in just the tiniest little bit okay so that'll be pretty good right in there all right so that'll be fine and then if you want to come up here and say okay the neck is going to come down of this right about down to here so I'll draw that line right about to here and then check. You can use your little calipers here that I show you. The links to these little calipers, these are a nice little pair, are right in our video description. So you can go get that. So you can see that. And then I'm just going to join this up with a little angled line there and there. And I'll have a pretty good vase. And at any point, you can check to make sure you're right on those lines and I am off of that center line so you know you've got the the vase and everything there you've got a pretty good uh, you know it's symmetrical off of both sides here then you can go in and do a little bit more refining of those lines if you want and we'll drop that ellipse down just a little bit this can come in just a bit we check that again right there and I just it's really easy so here to right there yeah so and you can just wipe just a bit like this just to soften that out and check that you get that that vase really nice there and this is pulls in a little bit more this one is a but you know this is this this is just a real quick fun way to uh, you know get some uh, your vase on here any area that you uh, you know you think you might be off on or something like that then you can uh, just check it with your um, with your calipers. Now this is going to be the shadow, so I'm just going to quickly just put in a little bit. This just helps you see it, and I'll soften my lines here. My highlights are going to come right in through there. My shadow is going to be there, and I'll see that. And when I do a study, this is uh, I like to do all kinds of versions, but this is how I like to to really start these out something like this it gives you a, a little bit of a you know a visualization of that's that's what this is going to look like okay so now we'll grab a paper towel and let's do some roses now i don't want to copy the roses that, that'll make them really small so, so i'm going to do a smaller composition of them and uh, maybe one will break that uh We'll break that ellipse a little bit, which is what I like to do. Maybe one that's going to come back up over this way. He, that Mortimer's likes to always kick one back off to the side here like this. Maybe one that's going to come up right up over here. Maybe one right back up over here. And then let's lengthen. Let's lengthen this. We might even push this one back behind there. Something like that. Now we can have... You know, as you get further off. So this is what's called the formal area of the composition right in here. So I want these two roses to touch each other. That's called formal. I want these to spread out and become informal. And that's going to lighten the eye. So what it does, whenever you draw, and the, the Victorian painters did this a lot, formal to informal design. And I have an entire course on design. But the... Uh, the, the Victorian painters would really formalize that area, especially down by where that vase is going to be, and then they become less in or become more informal. So maybe we'll just lift up a rosebud right out over here to take that a little bit more informal or maybe a smaller one back up over here. You can have something going on, usually leaves or something, and we can drop. Now on his over there, we had it over here, but I have lots of nice room to put a rose right down here at the bottom and I think that might look really nice. And, and sometimes when you're just lightly sketching, just sketch the centers of the roses here. Just kind of push them out and you'll be able to, to see your idea here of the rose really nice just by that, uh, by that center. And so that center, where that center, let's push this one up and out so that center, just spin it around like that, and it can give you some idea here of so nice little dark center, the bowl of the rose right here, right there. Spin this up and around, maybe right in there, so that rose will go out that way. Let's take this rose back out this way, up to the top, put a little shadow back there. This one back here, of course, the prettiest would probably be going out that way and this one falling down and out a little bit that way so it gives you that idea 
of you know and, and it's really it's really casual but when you draw a casual line like this and i'm stepping back and see i'm using an old uh bristle round uh, sometimes you see me use a bristle filbert that gives you a little bit more divi uh, defined line this gives me a nice loose um, very easy to adjust line we'll bring that vase maybe right in here so we'll see just a little bit of the lip so we'll end up lowering it down just a bit right where that's going to go so that this gives me some ideas now here and uh, that's a great way to do it now there's you know, we're going to put in, uh, let's just go to our, our filbert here. We're going to put in uh, some of the background. I like to work the background, and but I don't want to lose some of my sketch here, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the acrylic side of this, and I'm not going to go to white. I'm going to go to medium white. Since I'm going to have some pink and yellow and white roses, I'm just going to use some medium white here, maybe a little bit of water to it, but I want it a little heavier here. And I'm just going to take some medium white here and casually knock in just the idea here of this rose right where it's going to be right in there. And so as I work my background, I'm going to paint into this edge. This is just an idea. So I'm going to actually uh, paint into the back edges of this rose. This rose is going to become smaller and then it'll become bigger again. It's a painting of the edges back and forth. And that's what a lot of the Victorian painters did. We painted edges back and forth. So I'll put some of this medium white, a little heavy right up here. This is where that rose is going to be. I'll just lightly sketch some to the outside there. Okay. I'll come up over here, do the same thing. Medium white. Why medium white, not white? Because I don't want this to be too glaring. Because I, I'm going to keep, I keep everything soft, especially as I start these backgrounds and stuff. This one right in here, there's going to be the rose. It's going to come that way. And see, all I'm really concentrating on, and I can even build a little textures here. That won't hurt, as long as it's not textures that won't get in the way of your painting here later on. Um, you know, you can do all different kinds of things here, all of, you know, but I like to, why am I doing this? So as I work the background, I won't lose basically my roses. That's the big thing. And I'm gonna work the background here. So we want this one to open up this way. Here comes this one. It's going to be about that size. So you can see them really well. You could even, even with some of your pewter, put down. And what you really have when you, when you do something like this is uh, what the Dutch used to do all the time. And I did this for years. It's basically called a penumbra or an, um, an umbra or penumbra uh, layer was before they would they would do this first in their paintings. You can go look that up. Just go Google that, the umber layer or the penumbra layer, painting a painting first with umber, and then, especially for you beginners, what you want to look up is what is called the seven-layer Dutch or the Flemish technique. And what it is is the seven layers, and they start out with penumbra or umbra, You'll see both of it, see it both ways. And then they go to the dead layer, which is called Grisaille, which is where they use their grays and they paint the volume of it. I did that for years on paintings, especially as I learned how to draw because it was a great way to do that. And so basically what you're looking at here is an umbra version of the painting or penumbra, P-E-N. And or uh, so you can just kind of visualize it. And I started, you know, a lot of the paintings that I do to find the techniques I like to use today. That's how I started up. Now, I'm going to switch over to my large brush. I'm going to take some burnt umber and that raw umber, which makes those colors of that frame really well. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to, and there are semi-transparent kind of colors here. And I'll just do some light washes here of it here like this because I'm going to put in lights as well but I'm I'm going to kind of kind of set up here my light source now I'm going to want to have some through light right back here so I don't want to get too dark there Dave right up in that area so if my light's coming this way my through light's going to go back up and hit back up here 
On the other side, back up over here, is where I would get the darkest. And so I can just go ahead and put on some darker paint. But again, I like to, you see how I move my brush in all kinds of ways, and I'm just gonna move it in here. I love the modeling of backgrounds and stuff. That just, it, you know, it just, it, 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 all, it sparks my creativity. Let's put it that way. I love this modeling of the backgrounds. And uh, it just gets me thinking about colors and movements. Now right in here is really where I want to have some heavy duty color. This is really where I want to pull the viewer's eye. This is where we're going to have some of the low shadows. Kushwa did this. You see me do this in Kushwa vases and stuff before. Um, we're going to pull that viewer shoom, right into here. So we're going to have real clean edges, but we're going to have real lights and darks. Look at the modeling of some of that color. Matter of fact, it'd be really nice to have some just some umber, burnt umber showing up here. A little warmer, a little warmer right in, and you can just barely see that in there to that, um, you know, working there of the of the uh, raw umber. Burnt umber, raw umber together combinations are just pretty paintings. Now, as we come down here, so we'll tap some of that in here, and then what we'll do is we'll thin this out. Let's just thin this out, mix this up a bit, thin this out. You could even have some of this extender in here, you know, like I showed you just a second ago. Put some extender in, keep it wet. I'm gonna, just enough to get it to flow. I like extender because it just causes the paint to get really slippery here. And uh, I like that. And I'm gonna paint into those edges of those flowers just a bit, just mark some of this. Now, if I was really impressionistic, I would leave some of that heavy brush marks and stuff there because we want that that's the impressionism let's put a little bit of dark right in here we'll kick it out see i like that rolling of the paint a bit there and that movement into that background just makes it neat and i'll just leave some of that into the movement of that background we can go ahead and kick in the area here where our cast shadow is going to be right back up in here and just mark through that a bit See, it's real casual. See, just boom, 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 boom. Just leave that. Um, you can soften this front light right here, which will have a better transition of the light right there. So we'll just soften that front end because that's where we want the, the value to just softly go across. But right back up in here, and again, we'll have that nice cast shadow. We can get real heavy right in there. Let's pick up a little more paint, almost out of umber there of that raw umber, just like that. Real heavy right in there, so you can see where that cast shadow is gonna be. Now, that works really, really well, and see, then you go grab your frame and you go, yeah. I mean, that's gonna be pretty. And see, I can leave some of these colors right out here like this, focus my colors into the, uh, into the center right in through here, just leave some of that background and all that movement, just a few things hitting there, here and there, and I'll have a beautiful painting. The white is, you know, this penumbra, basically this umbra painting is taking on the looks of this frame. So that will work pretty well. And there'll be some of you that will, you can do all different, when you do those umbra and you use some of those old Dutch techniques, or some of you that like that write me and you really like the Versailles stuff, but when you use some of those techniques like that, um, you know, and you can stop at any one of those Flemish, there's seven layers, seven different types of colored layers to it, and you can stop anywhere there and have beautiful paintings and it gives you all kinds of ideas. Now, let's just not take that medium white, rinse that out for a second. And I'm going to take this uh, bit, I should probably put out a bit more of the umber here, and this one was a little plugged here, but uh, take a bit more of this uh, umber and stuff that I have here, and let me open this back up. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, you ever done that? You just don't close the tubes, I get going so much, I don't close the tubes, I clean, I, I just uh, squirt out the, the color and then get going with it, and I just don't, uh, I don't do that 
<laughs> like I should do that here. So that one's pretty much plugged up. So I'll just go grab this one here and squirt some up. Not a good thing. Follow what I tell you to do, not what I always do. So here we'll take some of the uh, umber and the burnt umber and the raw umber right in through here and we'll kick in just a bit of the shape of some of the roses. This helps you see it a little bit. And what it does is it takes the background shadow uh, into the into the rose here. So you'll be able to see them a little bit more. And, and that's the whole ticket here of painting beautiful things. And it allows my recessed edges back here to really kind of just flow right into the background. But I'm a big advocate of tying, and you hear me all the time, tying your roses, tying your compositions. In your westerns, I do the same thing. You know, tying the back elements to the background, to the sky, because that's where all of the, that's what causes it to do what we call ground. It causes it to ground to the, uh, to the background. And so nothing becomes floating when you do that. So here we'll push a little bit of that. Now that, David, is going to go the wrong side. It should actually come heavier, darker over here because light's coming this way. And this is the thing is, you know, and I love painting and creating like this. Just using a few photos for inspiration, not and just letting yourself go with it. And, you know, there's a lot of artists that teach, you know, putting out a composition and, and copying some of that composition or using it. And, you know, and, and I do that a lot as well. But I do love this creating because this is when this composition really becomes mine. And I just so enjoy that particular part of it. Okay, so there you have a really good umbra looking of the painting here before we go we could have some darker uh, touches like right in through here really where we want those viewers to go so creating again that that real nice contrast that's going to come up in through here okay so now what we're going to do is i'm going to come in and i'm going to take some of this umbra but i don't want the color to them this umbers I don't want this color to be absolutely the same as there. I'm going to add a little extender medium, still a little thin, and I'm going to go over to that pewter color, which is a tiny bit of the thalo blue here into this color. So I want this grayish kind of pewter color that's going to come down. Now I want to keep it warm, so I'm going to control that with burnt umber and raw umber, mostly on the shadow side over here, the raw umber, because it's not quite as warm as the burnt umber. Now, on this edge, I'm going to blur this edge a little bit right in here into some of that. Now, that's not a good mark there. But see, if I was casual painting, really, really super casual painting, I would leave that uh, there because it's a, it's a great mark. And, uh, you know, so I'd leave that. But it, since we're going to do a little different here, I'll do that. So I'm going to get this cooler color into this side over here so it's umbers and a little bit of blue and I'm going to take some of that color and actually this is one thing that we're going to do when you shift and so it's almost like a putting on a dead layer or grisaille here onto the painting I want some of this color here to appear and in various values and stuff here I want some of it to appear in other areas of the floral, okay? And especially the shadow areas here of my flowers. And I talk to you about that all the time in all the videos, whether you're painting westerns or you're painting uh, flowers, you're painting portraits. I always talk about the color harmonies. And I don't feel that, you know, and when I started studying a lot of color harmonies is when I became a much better artist. And that's the, really the definition between a painter and an artist, I always say, is getting your color harmonies correct and studying color theory and learning that. We can even use a little open medium. Open medium keeps your colors thicker. Okay. So, but I want, you know, some of this is going to paint out, but I want some of that to, to stick around. Now, and... This is still really, really wet there, but we can, and so if I do anything, 
Um, you know, this is a great thing here is that, you know, if you take any kind of water, you can see how you cut through it really well. And so I've showed you, if you haven't looked through all the videos that I have here, one of them I show you is we put on this umbra and then I use a brush with water and, and I cut through and I do the drawing on top of that. And that works really well. But you have to be careful if you have water in your brush and this is not dry, it'll, it waters the solvent. So we want to put in some extender here and maybe some open medium. And I want to take a little bit of my medium white and some of this color burnt uh, raw umber blue medium white and I want to work just a bit of this color maybe a little bit more umber and some stuff I want to work some of this warm it's a it's a gray it's cool but I'm going to want to work a little bit of this right like this into some of this background we'll warm it up as well but again, what is this doing? When I'm, I'm always looking for ways to do what with my paintings? Add harmony. So it's going to take that up here where I'm going to have a through light situation where the color, the thought process here is the colors in the back back up here will be a little bit, it'll be lighter, but also cooler just a bit because I'm away from my center of interest. And so I can do that right now just by thinning out some of this and just putting a wash or two or a little bit of this on the shadow side, the cooler side there, just so you pick up some of that color around. And again, your eye moves through the color. Now, I don't wanna have a lot of that over here, but maybe a mark or two of that over here so I don't cut the painting exactly in half, see? So I'm gonna cut this across. Now, this is gonna look very light because it's one of the lighter colors that we're using right now, but it's gonna, I can always push it back later on, but I don't want to cut the painting in half like the dark, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take some of this here, a little variation of this. We'll add some. This will get some nice reflections back down up in here. You can use open medium or extender. Extender, I really like the, the best because it's thin. We're putting on colors here, really kind of thin here. Now all I'm looking for is a little bit of the color to come in through that uh, particular area and travel. Most of that is gonna be optically disappear. And what I mean by that is, what do you mean by optically disappear? You see all that, right? Until I come up here and do something like that, now your eye starts transitioning over to that white and seeing that white first. And so you control that by the optics at which you paint, the edges, the colors, and all of that kind of good stuff. So we're optically going to make some of that disappear here in just a little bit. All right. <clears throat> so that sets that. Let's set a bit of this color softly back up over on the other side. Maybe a bit more of the raw umber with it. It'll make a softer pewter color. So that other vase that you see back there was mostly raw umbers and blues and stuff when I painted that. It makes some of your pewter colors that you have. And then as you come up towards the center, we'll pick up a little bit more raw umber and medium white will make a soft transition. White will be a real harsh transition. So let's first do a little medium white with this and umber right down the center. Work that out. This is my three quarter inch flat brush so I can quickly put colors on and build the roundness of this particular uh, vase here. And uh, so we'll come out here a little bit more blue and umber and here. Just build this up. I'm going to build up some paint. Now, it's, you know, there's good, you know, I'm painting a la prima, basically. It's a, it's an impressionistic a la prima. And in that, you leave your shadows more transparent and bring out your fronts, your opaque uh, lights. So the lights are very opaque and the shadows are more transparent. Let's put just a bit of blue over here. And so uh, that's the, the best way to work that. And so I'll leave a little bit of blue, a little slightly bluer color coming out every once in a while here. 
I don't, I don't want my colors to be just solid. I like them to vary a little bit. So, uh, you know, always the tone changes a little bit. So let's take some of this blue, maybe even more of a violet here. We'll add just a little red violet to this. This will be a real cool color. Then we'll take it over with our umbers here just a bit. This will be a dark, cool color, just a little bit blue, but that's really where I want to go. And so we'll, add, we'll step off to the side here. Just step off to the side. Don't disrupt it. That's a good color. But add a little bit more umber to it so it's not quite so harsh here. And we'll push down the shadow side here. Use some of your calligraphy. I use small brush movements like this. So this is called modeling the colors across here. So you see all of this variation that I get through there? That's what I'm looking for. I don't want to go wee down like that. That'll kill the painting. It's a good way to just disrupt the entire painting here. And then on the edges here, this is where I like to blur some of those edges. So I'm going to pinch wipe my brush here, get a fresh paper towel, pick up some extender, put it into my brush, and I just want to lightly pull down and blur these edges a bit here so I'm not perfect. So some of my you know, base color will translate back out into, the, into those edges there, and some of it will stay up in the front. And that is uh, what's going to make the nice soft edge. Now, let's pick up a little bit more light right in here. We'll work that through. This is where we're going to want our light to hit up into that base. So we get a little more light, and then as we come down, umbers, and, you know, I just, boy, I'm just going right through that raw umber because I'm using a lot of it. We'll just put out some more here. Um, but the uh, uh, umber, we want to go more umber, maybe a touch of that blue. See, that's right in there, but more umber right in there. See, that's pretty. See, just move your brush like this. Metals reflect all kinds of colors around them. And that's what we want this to do. Let's slide right up here to that other blue. And we'll put down that other softer, bluer transition there. Here, just like that. And you can take your brush at the end and start to pull a little bit to, to get some of that shape. But you want some blue and, uh, you know, some of that real deep blue and violet and umber unmixed here. Just kind of tap them together. We want some of that. See, look at that. A little bit of violet right in there to pull out here. And don't, don't mix it up too well. You want this splash of coloring and stuff coming on in there. We will get some of that look back up here on the top, right where that shadow is as a cast shadow from that top rose coming down. So we'll push some of that right in there. That normally happens. That's a normal place. And of course, I'm creating this without a photo, but I've painted these types of vases thousands of times. So I kind of know what they look like. But you can go, you can just Google metal vases and get all kinds of pictures of them. And, and you can pull any one of those to help you see, the va see a vase like this. But when you're on the warm, when you're getting in that area, get more, more of the um, umber in it. We can get a little bit here for the nice, uh, the nice form shadow that comes around this area here. And we'll pick up now. I'm going to, since I'm going to start getting thick into the center, I'm going to start using some open medium. This is going to keep my colors really wet and allow me to really kind of pull around in there and get some of this uh, this color movement, this reflected movement that happens in a metal vase of all kinds of colors moving around there. I want some more umber right in here. Take out some of that blue just a bit and maybe a bit more umber right down here. Raw umber is what I'm using. You know, you could use that uh, burnt umber as well to get that nice and warm color in there but we can get we can take our blue our violet right over here and some of that raw umber 
a little bit of open medium, nice dark, cool color that we can, that's just a little bit blue. Step off to the side and hit some, uh, some umber with it. That's better. I'll need to put that other foot in there. But some of that can appear over here in our cast shadow or deep shadow. And you can bring just a little bit of this back slightly. Now you don't want to go past the ellipse. So right up about in here, it would fade the shadow again. Whenever you're dealing with um, basically the reflected light side, reflected light is the shadow side of the object where light hits and then bounces back up. It's a lower light, it's a cooler light. There's a lot of differences of it. It's what you learn in color theory. There's a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of definitions and stuff for it. See, I like this kind of stuff. So I'll just push that. I like that happening. I get that, that bit of color, that bit of movement of that background right back there, back behind that. I like that. And then I'll bring out just a bit of that reflected light. The reflected light has to be cooler and not as light a value as what you have coming on your highlight. And you can see that. So right in here, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, say, I'm just gonna put it in there. Not absolutely perfect, because I wanna paint more impressionism, but it does show I know that that's where reflected light is. But it doesn't have to be perfect on this painting. I want this more impressionistic. We'll push a bit more of that umber right in there. That's where it's gonna happen. You will have a slight bit of that cooler, Reflected light right in here, right in there, you know, and then it will pick back up to just a bit of that shadow. And this is where I play the blues and the umbers and get all kinds of colors going into that uh, particular shadow. As I come forward now, I'm using still just medium white. I haven't touched the whites yet, but we're going to have that light that's going to pull right down here, and I like to fracture it just a bit. That's where your light's going to be on this vase. And so you can see right in through here, I'm still a little bit too blended. I like the, the light moving a bit. So I'll just take that and I'll move, I'll bounce that light around a bit here. And if it's at that particular angle, right in that area, you want your light kind of your brush mark to be at that angle because that's where that is. It's, you don't put an angle on it right here on the outside edge. As a matter of fact, let me bring that out just a bit more here. You don't bring out an angle like right in here at that angle and then go straight down. That doesn't happen. This is a curved part of the vase. So I want that to be curved and I want a little bit of brush movement back in there. That causes the bouncing of the light here. You know, so I'll, but I'll, my brush calligraphy will follow the outside contours of the container. That's what, uh, that's what it's going to show. And we can put a, maybe a little bit of a lighter blue, a little umber and blue right through here. That gives a good color into that. That's kind of nice, but I, I go back and forth whenever I paint pewter or any of this kind of stuff between the umbers and my blues till I set up a real pretty kind of color of the vase that I like. Let's put a bit more blue into that cast light there, I mean that reflected light. A little bit of umber right next to it there. You can, I like to use my finger and pull through. If you're painting with oils, don't do that. Don't touch your paints. But, so we'll put that in. I'll put a little bit of a, just a, a light mark. And so this is where I will change and vary and add little spots, little spots of light, color and light. Maybe blur that just a bit here. I'll blur edges, pull back in a bit, blur some of those edges here. And uh, let's put a bit warmer right in here that casts the warm light from everything that's going on into the painting metals reflect everything around it and so all you got to do is just put in some of the your outside painting colors into your metal 
here and it starts to look like metal because metals reflect everything around it. So, and that's what this is, this particular metal is going to do here. And, uh, you know, we'll come back and paint some more stuff and, and, and with it. I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Now I'm going to pick up just a bit of white. And I don't, I, I want to model this down. I don't want pure white yet on this. But we'll see just what the, the white is to shine. So model that down a bit. Bit of blue, bit of the umbers and stuff like that in there. And uh, white will definitely be our shines and then I'll pick up just a little bit more pure white right here for right now just to see what that you can see I'm way down you can see that white is quite uh, quite a bit here so usually I'll just take it off a bit and I'll add little things like this and I know this all of a sudden you go what the heck did you just do those are little uh, I call them the little sparks of everything you know and I can soften those out, but those little sparks add a lot more of the light reflected in movement that you see in metal. So I get real casual with it, and then I start to paint it out just a bit, backing it out. So I put in too many. It's just like I do so many things. You always say, you know, like, uh, um, you know, when I'm working on a saddle or something like that, I say I come down with that light color too much and then I paint it back into position with the shadow. I'm doing the same thing here. And I learned to do that on florals, believe it or not, from doing westerns. And this is why I'm, I'm a big advocate and I push all of you to paint all the genres we do here on the channel because that's going to make you a better artist. An artist needs to learn how to see and do. If you just practice, if you want to paint flowers and you just practice flowers, practice flowers, practice flowers, you'll never be a floral artist. It's just like Couchois. I painted a lot of Couchois with you here on the channel. He studied portraits up until he died. You never saw him paint portraits, but he studied portraits to help him with his florals. And that's what it is. Sometimes you, you can see better by working a different genre than working the same thing over and just practicing it. And that is so very true, that's what I do. So, and that's what I believe, but that's why I, I enjoy painting all the genre here and presenting them to you, and that's what I like to do. So, let's just put a stronger warm right down there. Boom, right into that. That'll really pop this. Just round some of my movement, some of my sparking colors now. Just get more of a little, a little more rounding movement there with that. And just little marks there. And then we'll go back, and you'll see me do this a couple more times. I'll recorrect this mark here as it comes down. Maybe a bit of that travels up here. And you'll see me uh, correct this several times. And especially as I get further into the painting here, you'll see me correct some of this shine and some of these little marks uh, several times until I get it exactly the way I want it. Maybe, of course, we'll cover some of this up, but maybe we'll push the edge of that ellipse up here right now, just for right now. Leave a bit of that there so you can see that. And uh, we'll just lightly give the indication here of the foot, a little umber and blue up onto the shadow side of it here, of where that foot's going to be, maybe one right over here on this side, and right down like that. Just an idea, and of course the shadow would be this side, this down there and uh, I don't I you know I as the impressionist we just put an idea of it we don't get carried away with the shape too much you know it's just an idea of it we'll work on that a little bit more I'm gonna put a bit of a shine right in there just boom right now just cuz I want to see that <laughs> and it's nice and casual. But if you want that smoother look, I painted that for a long time, you can just take a little extender in your brush, extender in your brush, and work that uh, back and forth a little bit, and you'll get a smoother look. Now, let's take some of this warmer 
medium white, maybe a bit of extender. I'll use extender because I don't want this too thick yet. Maybe a bit of a umber into it. And let's put a warmer light right up front here, okay? Right up into the front of our painting. And you can see this is gonna knock down some of that harshness of the vase. And so really, honestly, it, you know, if you're a beginner, it's good to paint the color and paint it out. Paint the color and paint it out. I did the vase all at once here because I, I can see, I can see the painting, and this is the difference. You know what happens after all these years of painting. I can see the painting in my mind. For longest time, I couldn't. Okay, so if you can't break it up into work a color, move it through like I did through here. But look at right up through here now. As I put this light on, look what it did back here. When I put this all back here, some of you out there were going, okay, Dave, you just screwed it up, didn't you? But I know my value scale. This is the important part. See, I know my value scale, and I know my values I was working on in there weren't really above a five or six. And I know by the time I get my eights to tens up here in the front, that five or six area back there is going to soften out. Optically, it's going to soften out. So... I don't worry about that too much. So we'll push a little bit of this. We'll just let that just go like that. Maybe a bit of that nice umber right in through there. Let that raw umber blues. Let some of that just go through there. See, it's just real pretty, especially when you can get casual with it. And I couldn't for the longest time. Now I can. I wanted everything to be perfect. And I went through the, the phases of my career where I had every mop brush known to man because I felt that I had to make everything perfect. And I'm so glad I'm out of that phase and back into, uh, you know, working colors like this. This is a little blue and umber just pushing through. I'm just going to soften that back foot right there. Just as I'm thinking some shadow back up and through here, right? And then I'll take some of that medium white and I'll follow right down and that's where that light is going to be and then it's going to diminish coming off of that it's going to diminish coming across here like that and I'll touch into some soften that color in my brush with some of the other colors and see a good a, a good impressionist would just take a stroke of that color and leave that that's all they would do you know as you get more and more impressionism you leave more and more of a mark. You try not to stroke it a second time. You leave some of that mark because those brush marks add interest, especially as you get further back. Your eye does what's called optically blends them, okay? So it's really a, a nice way to do it. But So we'll push some of this in, push some of those browns, get some of those. I'm going to have to get more umber in here. Really using it a lot today. And we'll push some of that color right back up and through here. Just let some of that model right back down in there. That looks pretty good. Let's come in with some of our medium whites right up in here and just work those. Just Now, see, if I was too impressionism, I wouldn't work it that hard. I would just take a mark and leave it. But I'll do it like that today. And we'll follow that line back out here. Boom, right up there like that. That looks pretty good. I, I, And what I like is a smooth transition of color. So I'm just going to pull some of that. Now, see, that made me look like a lot. But like I say, as it starts to dry down, those colors are going to going to kind of uh, not blend, but they're, uh, they're going to kind of um, incorporate together. So... And it's going to look like you know what you're doing. So here I'm going to take just a bit of that off. Let it go back to the umber. So I want this smoother transition of light. I don't want a real harsh light and then a real harsh shadow. I want a transition of light as it moves across the surface. And I did a lot of light studies in my color classes years ago. And we studied light. And the greatest way to do that is at night... When it was dark, I shined a light on a, we had a big concrete warehouse and I put a light on it. And you can, as you get the light really close, you see it more as a spot. But as you step back, you see it, gent the light become more gentle, gentle and gentle. So as uh, you know, you'll learn that 
however much you spark that light, that's going to, you know, up in the front, that's going to control what the light should look like on the ground up here. So I'm going to push just a bit more light right there since I push so much light there. And I know that from my studies. And if you don't have those in your studies, then uh, what you can do is just, you know, find a photo that's very close and do that. But look for reflected light. See how much more bluer that reflected light is here than I just added more umber to make it a warmer side over here. So my light, and that's a, a real good light, I should probably encompass right in here a bit. Just pull it around and let some of this this fracturing happen because that's what happens with metals see so I'm incorporating my lights and stuff together I need a little bit right up here that light I just put down can come right up in here right in that area there doesn't need to be blended just because that's what gives you the look of metals and stuff okay Hi everyone. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is stop it right there and we'll go on to a second part. So the second part will upload and uh, then we'll continue on painting it just because of the size of the video. Okay, so we'll go back. I already got it finished. <laughs> so we'll go back, look for part number two and we'll finish it up. Okay, all right. Okay, welcome back. This is part number two of the 19th century uh, floral there. Let's get into the painting. 